He talked to ABC 17's legal analyst Stone Grissom about questions that were not answered during the trial and the defense team's mistakes. From right here, you could not see the victim in the parking lot. So when Chuck tells a story that they saw the victim in the parking lot and they decide to attack him, uh, that could not be possible. Bill Ferguson simply does not believe Chuck Erickson's story. The prosecution needed Erickson's accomplice testimony to win its case. Pervasive issues was the idea that here you've got somebody saying, I did this horrible thing. Um, I've wrestled with it for a long time. I feel terrible about it. And I am going to, you know, take the consequences. Uh, that message is very powerful. Erickson's confession is just one of the many problems Ferguson has with the verdict against his son. He thinks police should have investigated other potential suspects in the case. He's the last man to see Mr. Ohio alive. And I think in Detective School 101, the first thing you do is you investigate the last person to see him alive. He claims the case was a rush to judgment because the police lacked real leads. There's all kinds of blood evidence, uh, there's all kinds of DNA, and the police cannot solve the crime. And uh, I think they felt a tremendous amount of pressure. And that the prosecution may have been too eager to close the investigation and gain a conviction rather than finding the real killer. He knows that Ryan's innocent. I think he knows Chuck's innocent, and he pursued it. Mr. Ferguson certainly has a right to his opinion. Uh, I would, however, draw the line on being told what I think, because I know what I think, and that's that his son committed this crime and I would not have prosecuted him if I thought otherwise. But Ferguson's criticism does not stop with the police and prosecution. He blames the defense for making several key mistakes as well. They should have been more familiar with the, with the crime scene, I believe, I don't think they were. They should have uh, deposed uh, Michael Boyd, uh, which they never did. In fact, he's begun his own private investigation to continue what he calls the search for Heitholt's true killer. We still have an investigator that's pursuing leads. We've got uh, three or four, well, I'd say three real strong leads that we're following up on right now. The Ferguson family has also started a website listing what they see as inconsistencies between the testimony at trial and the evidence. There's a narrative that's about oh, 10 or 12 pages and it uh, tells a sequence of events. With more than 8,600 hits to date, Bill Ferguson says his ultimate goal with the website is to free his son by discrediting Erickson. Police admit there were inconsistencies, a point they conceded and explained at the trial. You take a fella that has been doing drugs and drinking alcohol, and then who goes out and kills someone, which is not a routine action on their part, I would totally suspect that they wouldn't remember exactly what they did. Mr. Erickson, you know, I'm sure that anybody can interpret testimony as they wish. But he came across as a credible, fallible human being. And the defense was never able to give the jury a credible reason for why he would engage in a complete fabrication. Still, Ferguson remains unconvinced. In fact, he believes Erickson became trapped in his own lies and had no choice but to confess. I think that he made a conscious decision to be a part of the murder as a lesser of, of two, op, uh, of two uh, outcomes. And he thought, I, I'm all, I, I don't think I can get myself out of this situation, uh, so I need to make myself believe that I did commit this murder. In addition to being an advocate for his son's innocence, Bill Ferguson is also a grieving father and will never see his son as a murderer. We're very close, very close, always been close, always will be close. And the only thing that happens in our relationship is we just get stronger and closer. Despite whatever closure the verdict has brought to this community, we'll probably never know every detail of what happened to Kent Heitholt on November 1st, 2001. What we do know, however, is that since his son's initial arrest, Bill Ferguson has been an unwavering advocate for his innocence. For now, Ryan's fate rests in the appellate process, a process that could take literally two years to complete. For ABC 17 in Columbia, I'm Stone Grissom.